Welcome to DIYEasyCrafts.com. Today we're going to take a look at how knife makers heat treat stainless steel. We're going to use AEVL stainless steel for this project. It's a great stainless, holds an awesome edge, hardens usually to a 60 or 61 on the Rockwell scale, and best of all, it's rust inhibiting factors. Now it is a little bit more complicated uh, to heat treat stainless than it is high carbon steel. Uh, high carbon steel I heat treat in my uh, furnace, a propane furnace, but for stainless you really need uh, a heat treating oven. The first step in the process is you have to wrap each blade in tool wrap. This is stainless steel tool, uh, tool wrap. It comes in two different thicknesses. Number 309 is for temperatures up to 2240 degrees and number 321 is uh, temperatures up to 2000 degrees. For AEBL stainless uh, we're going to be heating up that oven to 1950 so I can use either uh, the 309 or the 321. What you want to do is you want to make an as airtight an envelope as possible. So if you see that I've cut the foil a little bit oversized. You don't want to waste too much. This stuff is fairly expensive. But a little bit oversized, giving room to double fold each edge. And then I use a hammer to either tap down that seam uh, or slide the hammer right along and crease that seam. And again, double fold it. The object here is to reduce the amount of oxygen around that blade and therefore prevent decarb or scale from forming on the blade uh, during the heat treating process. Some people take a little piece of organic matter, a little piece of paper, a little piece of wood, and they also add that into the envelope, uh, thinking that uh, that will burn up and consume whatever residual oxygen is in that envelope. I don't really think that's necessary. I don't do it. Uh, if you are going to add uh, either paper or wood, uh, either add a barrier of another little piece of, of uh, stainless foil so it's not touching the blade, or at the very least put it on the handle end. Sometimes that material can leave a stain uh, if you were to put it uh, over the blade, and that stain can be hard to, hard to remove afterwards. So anyway, I've got a bunch of uh, AEBL stainless uh, blanks. And all of them have been rough ground. The bevels have been rough ground, rather. And I'm going to just make a project of this. I, I, I like to heat treat in batches, not only because uh, I only have to you know, heat the oven up one time, but also we're going to um, quench these in dry ice, cryo treatment, uh, after the heat treating. And even the dry ice costs a little bit of money. So you know, I like to do you know, at least six blanks at a time. And in this case, it's, it's probably closer to 14. Now this is my little cheat sheet. I, I make one of these for each different type of steel uh, that I heat treat. This one is for the AEBL. So you see that uh, we're going to wrap it in tool wrap, we're going to heat the oven up to 1950 degrees, we're going to hold it at temp uh, for 15 minutes, and then we're going to plate quench between two aluminum uh, plates, and then we'll go into the cryo treatment. So this is the oven. Um, it's been set at the 1950 degrees. I'm going to start placing uh, the blanks which are wrapped in the tool wrap into the oven before it gets um, up to the desired degrees. You really want to warm these up you know from somewhere in the thousand to fifteen hundred range is where I usually start. You can tweak that heat treating recipe you know based on the thickness of the blanks that you use uh, your particular oven you know the thermometers on these ovens are not 100% accurate all the time, or my oven might be a little bit different than yours, but the recipe that I've um, listed, and I'm, I'll make that available as a, a downloadable PDF on DIY Easy Crafts, is a really good starting point. I get, I, I get really nice results. The first time I heat treated um, in this oven with the stainless, I tried to heat treat between these two um, 
plates of aluminum just using clamps and it was you know very clumsy wasn't very quick but wasn't smooth uh, and it just I got good results but I wasn't really happy with the process I then went out uh, to Harbor Freight and I picked up one of these carpenters vices I, I drilled and tapped uh, two aluminum plates and I just with I think it was quarter 20 bolts I just bolted them I, I bolted a plate onto the top and onto the bottom of that vise so that the, the plates move up and down as you're opening and closing that vise and this setup is is much easier so now I remove the, the blanks once they've reached that temperature and have been held for the 15 minutes I put them into the aluminum plates and notice my aluminum plates are not solid um, I went with a um, rectangular tubing uh, the reason I did that was it was the material that was available to me in my friend's metal shop scrap bin. Uh, but also, I find that I can blow air through uh, the center of each one of those uh, rectangular tubes, and it really helps cool the material as quickly as, pro as possible. So the plate quenching really doesn't take long. Um, I use compressed air from a, from a compressor. I blow air all around uh, the material as well as through the middle of those of those rectangular tubes and within you know three four minutes it's cool I wouldn't touch it uh, bare hands but it, it's certainly cool enough to come out of the plates the plates also really help prevent warping. So these blanks come out nice and straight. The goal here is to prevent scale or decline. You will see a little bit of discoloration wherever oxygen gets through. But really that's a that's a very successful heat treat right there. Very, very little scale. That comes off very easily. Once you're done with the whole heat treating process, you are going to want to test these knives. And I did another, another video on how to uh, test how hard these planks are using files. I'll put a, a link to it right up on, the, on this video. You really want these blades to be somewhere in that 60-61 in that range. Now the only modification to this clamping system that I have here is I am going to redo it and I'll make that bottom plate probably about four or five inches longer than the top plate, just so that I have a table that helps me rest those foil wrapped blanks on and then slide them into positions. It just, just make it a little bit of an easier transition uh, into the clamps. Again, blowing compressed air over each one of the blanks, cooling them down as quickly as possible. You're going to handle this, make sure you wear gloves. And even though it's cooled down, it's still very, very possible to get burned. Some people, some knife makers actually heat treat, I would say EBL, without tool wrap. Uh, but then you have to grind off all the scale. Uh, it just doesn't seem worthwhile to me. I will, I will experiment with it a little bit. I get such good results with the tool wrap, it, it's, it's hard not to use it. So anyway, these are some of the knives after they've been heat treated and after they have been uh, plate cooled. Finishing off the cooling process a little bit with a little bit more compressed air. And at this point we're almost done. The next thing is going to be uh, to put these into cryo. And cryo means bringing them down to about negative 95 degrees. I use dry ice. 
Now, if you were a, a commercial knife maker and you made a lot of uh, knives, you might want to look into liquid nitrogen. Liquid nitrogen uh, will get these blades down to negative 300 to 400 degrees. Uh, the bigger the, the change you know, from your heat treating temperature of 1950 uh, down to the sub-zero temperatures, uh, it, it's the stronger the blade, the more uh, edge durability you're going to have, the tighter grain you're going to have. So the cryo is an important, uh, an important step. You can make a slurry out of the dry ice. You can put these blades between two flat blocks of dry ice. Um, you know, whatever, whatever works for you. If you're doing one or two knives, just between two flat blocks works fine. If you're going to do a whole bunch of knives, I would definitely recommend making a slurry. There's no hold time that you have to keep these blades at that sub-zero temperature. I usually leave them in for you know at least a half hour or more than more than usual. I leave them in there for a couple of hours. When they come out of there, then you're going to go through the whole tempering cycle. Uh, I let them warm up to room temperature. I then put them in an oven. Uh, the oven temperature was 375 to 400 degrees for two hours. And let then open the door, let it cool. And then do that whole process again. Anyway, very simple, straightforward uh, heat treating for AEBL stainless. I will list uh, other recipes for other materials. Uh, all will be available on that DIY EasyCraft site. Uh, these are some of the finished products uh, made from AEBL stainless. It's a really nice material to work with. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I ask that you please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this YouTube channel. And I'd like to give you an invite to join us on our Facebook group, Knives and Knife Making. Uh, please join the group. Uh, show us some pictures of your own creations. Thank you.